Hello, I'm Michael Stevens. I'm a pediatric gastroenterologist at the Mayo Clinic, and I specialize in inflammatory bowel diseases in children. I wanted to talk a little bit about what we understand and don't understand about genetics in inflammatory bowel diseases. I think in some of these other uh, presentations, people may have discussed the fact that when an individual develops inflammatory bowel disease, there are multiple factors uh, that come into the development of the disease. Some of them are genetic, some of them are environmental, and then in the middle of this is the patient's immune system. What we understand about the genetics of IBD is that it's pretty complicated. There are over 200 genes that are connected to inflammatory bowel disease. Some of them are more specifically connected to Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, but there's also significant overlap across those diseases. It's not as simple as the kind of genetics uh, you might remember from high school biology, where there's a single gene and uh, inheritance may be considered autosomal recessive or autosomal dominant. In, in the sense of a recessive gene, if a patient has one copy of that gene, they're a carrier, but they generally don't become sick. If the patient has two copies, they become sick. Or in the case of a dominant gene, you only need one copy of that gene in order to develop the illness that it's associated with. So this is a very different story in inflammatory bowel diseases. Many people have those genes and never get sick. And if you think about the fact that there's over 200 genes, part of what that says to me is this isn't one disease or even two or three diseases that really an individual's form of inflammatory bowel disease is probably unique to them with their genetics playing a role in determining what's unique about their version of that disease. We tend to think of these genes more as susceptibility factors. So a person who has, uh, in a sense, the wrong or, or a higher risk genetic hand dealt to them is at a higher risk of, de of developing this disease, but other events need to happen. And again, these, these tend to be environmental events, as well as the, the evolution of that patient's immune system in response to the many things that we're exposed to throughout our life. In that sense, genetic testing has really not become a major part of how we treat this disease. Ideally, we would love to be able at, the di at, at diagnosis to do genetic testing and use that to help us individualize treatment. We're just beginning to come to a point where that may become incorporated in the clinical care of a typical patient who's diagnosed with Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis. There are a couple of pediatric studies, one that was recently completed and another one that's in progress that have tried to look at this. The way that that was done is children, when they were diagnosed with IBD, were enrolled in these studies and followed forward for many years in order to understand what's happening with their disease activity and how their disease behaves. The goal of these studies were to identify some, fa some markers, genetic and other markers, that would help us predict how that individual's disease may behave. There's a lot of variation in how, for example, Crohn's disease may behave. Some people have inflammation that's fairly mild and relatively easy to control. Other patients develop more complicated problems, such as a fistula, where the inflammation actually goes through the entire thickness of the bowel wall and can, can create a connection either into the abdominal cavity or to the skin or to an, another organ. This is called a fistula. Other people with Crohn's disease develop scarring, where that pipe that is their colon at certain segments becomes very narrow so that it's difficult for food to pass through. So these are situations where the disease becomes more complicated and those patients may be more likely to require surgery. The goal of some of these studies that I was just alluding to was to really identify if there's a way we can profile patients when they're first diagnosed to see who is more likely to develop some of those complicated problems. The first study that was done in Crohn's disease was able to identify a profile in patients who are more likely to have uh, complications or need surgery.
It also seemed to identify a profile of patients who are more likely to respond to specific medications that are commonly used, primarily anti-TNF medications. Some of, the, some of those medicines are called Remicade or Humira or Simsia. Those findings are going to need to be validated in order to be incorporated into clinical care. But if we think about the next five years and how we take care of children with inflammatory bowel disease, um, our, our hope is that this becomes routine and allows us to identify the best treatment for that individual's form of inflammatory bowel disease up front. There's another example where genetic testing is becoming a part of the clinical care of patients with inflammatory bowel diseases. This is a more unusual situation because it's pretty rare for very young children or toddlers or infants to develop Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis. When that happens, we often ask some more complicated questions because, uh, it, because it's unusual. Uh, what we have found is that uh, children who develop things that look an awful lot like Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis as a toddler may actually have a much more rare disease that just happens to look a lot like Crohn's disease. In this sense, the goal of genetic testing isn't to identify genes that have been connected to Crohn's disease, that, that list of 200 genes I was talking about earlier. Instead, the goal is to change the diagnosis. The goal is to find uh, a genetic cause of that person's illness, and it's typically a new diagnosis, not Crohn's, but a different one. Many of those things are very rare primary immunodeficiencies. And so we do genetic testing to look for these rare diseases, and sometimes that helps us make a more specific diagnosis than saying, an individual has Crohn's. This usually requires a team approach, including genetics counselors and immunologists who are able to characterize how that individual's immune system is behaving, and experts at interpreting the data from that genetic testing. So we're at an interesting crossroads in how we manage these diseases if we think about the average patient with Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, our hope is that in the, in the years to come, we'll be able to divide this into much smaller groups than these two very big groups, where we can have a, a much higher likelihood of choosing the best therapy to get that patient in remission quickly. The other area where this is expanding is again, early onset IBD, and again, the goal there is actually to change the diagnosis and find a very specific therapy for those individuals.